Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jing Yi. This is a place where I share about my crafty hobby and my love to yarn and knitting. This is not my regular podcast episode where I share about my knitting progress in the past month. So today's video is a roundup of everything that I knit in 2023. So I know um, it's still November. We have one more month to go for this year. Um, it's just I will be back to my hometown in China um, for the whole December. So I won't be able to bring a big pile of my knitted garments to China. This is my favorite type of video to watch on YouTube. It's always very nice to see a lot of finished objects all in one place and very inspiring to see what other people have made this year. So I wish you can enjoy this video as well. And uh, I will be going through this big pile of garments that I knitted this year. I also have a smaller pile over there um, of like socks and accessories. So the other I will go through this big pile is probably chronologically. Oh, it's falling down. <laughs> So I will try to go through these two piles chronologically, but I will talk about bigger pieces like sweaters, cardigans, tops first, and then we'll go to smaller objects like socks and accessories. You might find more gift knitting at the end of the video um, if that's what you're looking for for the holidays to like gift knitting for friends and families. Please stay till the end or you can use the chapter marker in the progress bar or down in the description box. So if you scroll down of my video, you can see more. If you click on that, it should open up the description box. It should contain everything that I talk about in this video and also links to all the Ravelry pages if I happen to have one. Uh, most of the projects, I should have a Ravelry page and you can find more information over there. So I've been knitting for three years, but I started this channel three months ago. You might already see some of the finished objects if you watched my previous episode and thank you so much for returning um, but I assure you there are definitely something new to you yep so I will start with what I'm wearing today this is the novice cardigan mohair edition by Petit Knit and I think I knitted two years ago so it's not a part of the collection that I'm going to share today it's a DK weight top-down raglan pattern and as the pattern name suggested, it's great for beginners. I knit this cardigan as my second sweater slash cardigan and it's my first cardigan that I ever knitted and it turns out lovely. I wear it a lot. The pattern suggested to use two strands of mohair held together but I, but I think I used one strand of Cascade 220 fingering weight merino wool plus a strand of mohair from Valley Yarn. I think the name is South Hammerston. Um, so if you are a beginner knitter, you want to knit your first ever cardigan, I definitely recommend this pattern. Um, and you don't need to purchase two strands of mohair, which might be quite costly. There's also a chunky version of this cardigan that might be more beginner friendly. So let's dive into the big pile of everything that I knitted this year. I will first start with this Friday slipover v-neck version. It's a pattern by Petit Knit. I knit this piece um, in the spring. So I always wanted to knit this pattern because my first ever knitted garment was a white vest. Um, there are a bunch of mistakes on that vest, but I still wear it a lot. So I know that vest is something that I will always reach for in my wardrobe. And I really like the broken rib and v-neck construction on this vest. So I kind of wanted to name myself a upgraded version of that first ever white vest. The pattern suggested to use a strand of Seneskan Sunday plus their thin silk mohair. So that's what I use. The Sunday yarn that I use is in color 1015. It's a white beige yarn with a slight hint of gray in it. The mohair that I use is 1022. It's a gray mohair with some black fiber coming out. 
and holding the Sunday plus Ting Tok Mo here together created the uh, broken rib part. You can see that it's slightly gray toned and I used a different mohair for the ribbing part. It's again Valley Yarn South Hemiston. It's their white silk mohair. Um, so I really like how the ribbing part is um, slightly white and brighter than the body and uh, it's not a very huge color contrast um, so it literally goes well with anything in my wardrobe. I wear this piece a lot this spring and fall and it should be a great layering piece in the winter as well. Even though I wear it a lot and I haven't depilled it, I didn't see any very obvious uh, peeling happening to the fabric so that's really great and the fabric is really soft um, yeah I really like this piece and the second thing that I finished this year is this step-by-step -step sweater this is a free pattern with a free YouTube tutorial um, created by Florence from handmade by Florence on YouTube and Instagram um, so this, I think the pattern is designed to be beginner friendly as your first knitted sweater. This is not my first sweater, it's my second actually. I found myself knit a lot of cardigans but less pullovers or sweaters. It's just I really like to wear cardigans. It's easy to throw on any t-shirt that I have. But I really wanted a striped sweater um, earlier this spring. Um, for the pattern, it's a very simple top-down raglan. So the pattern provided two upgrades that you can do. Um, the first one is that for the color, uh, instead of the regular tunnel neck, you can you can do a fold over neck. So that's what I did. Um, it will create a really chunky and squishy neck that I really like. And the second upgrade is that you can do German short rows for the back and neck shaping. And I also did that. It was not my first time doing German short rows. So it's a great pattern for beginners and also for folks who have already knit some sweaters for yourself. Um, so the yarn that I use is Crane from Queen's and Co. It's a very special and soft yarn. Um, it has 50% of wool and 50% of merino. So normally if I want to add mohair to the garment I always use um, silk mohair which is a lace weight yarn and uh, the mohair fiber is just wrapped around the silk core but this yarn doesn't have silk in it and uh, I know nothing about spinning or fiber making it's just really amazing to me that um, the mohair and the merino is held together in this yarn and uh, the blue color that I use is 619 Quanuck and the white is long home. I really like this yarn because it's really soft and uh, it's a worsted weight yarn so the whole sweater just knitted up very quickly. I'm not 100% happy with the fit of the sweater. The top part of the raglan is a bit too close to me. It would be kind of hard if I'm wearing some t-shirt underneath. Um, I'm not sure how to explain but um, it's a bit tight on the top part. Other than that, it's a perfect oversized sweater and uh, um, I've not I haven't wear it that much because um, I know this soft yarn will definitely peel a lot but I haven't deep peel at all um, so you can see there are some stitch that already get blurred and under the arm um, it's not peeling but you can kind of see that the mole here kind of um, coming out if I depeal it, it should come back to its original beauty. Yeah, so that's my step-by-step -step sweater. And the third finished object is my Levitate wrap. So the wrap cardigan is always a bit hard to show you guys, but uh, let me put it on. So here's my Levitate wrap. It's a design by My Favorite Things Neighbor as a part of their Isagur Breeze collection. The pattern calls for Easy Girl Trail 1 and EcoSoft. I don't have access to the yarn um, at the time where I knitted because I knitted as soon as the pattern was released because I was so drawn into the model's picture. Um, so I used a strand of um, Queens and Co. Lark plus a strand of Easy Girl Silk Mohair. 
um, to create an iron weight fabric. Um, I really like how this piece was knit up because it's a very new construction for me. Um, it's a drop shoulder wrap cardigan with double folded neckband and the ribbon. Um, I talk about this in more detail in the last episode. It's a little bit boxy and with super long arms. It's a great pattern and I like the color choice. Um, I normally tend towards neutral tones, but when I want to add a bit of color in my wardrobe, I would choose blue. Blue is so my color. And I think the love starts from this cardigan. And um, there's only one thing that I modified, but it's my mistake. I think I knit the ribbon wrong. So both of my ribbon are coming from the edge of the two panels. But if you knit your levitate wrap, you'll probably know that um, this left ribbon should coming out from this this side, um, directly from this side instead of um, the edge of the fabric. So it's my mistake, I read the pattern wrong. The pattern is perfectly clear, it's just I made wrong assumption of the construction and just knit this blindly. So if you're working on or you plan to work on levitate wrap, this is a mistake that I hope you don't make. Probably only me. So we are done with the very early spring knit and we'll go to the summer knits. Um, the first one that I knit earlier in the summer, probably should count as a spring knit as well, is this. It's, it's the Alois top by Friday Knits. So the top part was working one strand of silk mohair. You start in the mid back and then work to the top up to the shoulders. Um, the stitches are bound off for the neck and you work the front pieces and pick up stitches for the sleeve. The bottom part was supposed to use some summer yarn. I used a cotton blend yarn for the bottom and in the back there are some stretchy one by one ribbing. I really like the shaping above the bust. It's like a heart shape. I think Friday Knits used this shaping in many of her patterns. Um, and you finish everything off with a neat high core bind off. It's definitely not a regular summer piece, but I'm amazed at how versatile this piece could be. I wear it out a lot. And once I wear it in a fine dining restaurant, because I think the whole design was really um, elegant, but I think the only downside is that um, it's not a bra friendly pattern. Um, you can see that the fabric created by one strand of silk mohair is very see-through. Um, you have to be careful of what kind of bra that you are wearing. I really like the cotton blend yarn that I use. It's Andina Cotton by Concept. It's, it has 73% of cotton, 18% of alpaca, and 9% of nylon. Um, I normally have negative experience working with cotton or cotton blend yarn, but this is the first time that I actually enjoyed working on it. Um, it's a purple yarn and uh, has some heather or a uh, variegation of the color. Um, normally the cotton fiber will make my stitch look really uneven, but not with this yarn. Maybe because, maybe because of the animal fiber in it and also the way that the color is a bit heathered. I really want to try this yarn again and maybe knit a short sleeve in it. I'm not sure if this fabric would be too thick for a summer piece. Maybe it would be good for some lightweight cardigan in spring or transition weathers. Yeah, I would definitely use this cotton yarn again. So the next thing that I knit this summer is a cotton blend disaster. <laughs> this is camisole number no. 6 by My Favorite Things Mirror. Um, this is a worsted weight pattern. You work from top down, you work the two panels separately um, on the top part, and then you draw in the body. I think it's a six by six ribbon, and um, it looks really great on the sample picture and um, on Instagram of other people's finished object. But you can kind of see that the knit part of the ribbon is not very even. And I tried to fix it multiple times by unraveling everything and try different method. I think I watched several YouTube tutorials of how to knit your ribbon more neat. So this is what I ended up 
with. I think this is the best I could do. So I knit the first and last of the knit stitch twisted and leave the knit stitch in the middle um, normally. And I also try to tighten up the post stitch as well. But it's still very uneven. I'm not sure if it's because of the yarn that I used. The pattern calls for two strand of light fingering silk yarn held together to create a worsted weight fabric. But I used one strand of Rowan's cotton cashmere. Uh, it has 85% of cotton and 15% of cashmere. So I thought it should be a really soft and luxurious fabric, but the knitting experience was, was not very good. The yarn is very dry and it's not very drapey. I think it has more cotton quality to it, but less of the animal fibers. And I couldn't really feel the 15% of cashmere in the fabric. In general, this is a great pattern. Um, the fit is good. It's just I couldn't wear it out because the stitches are very obviously uneven. Uh, maybe I should give it a try with the pattern suggested yarns. It might create a more even fabric. Yeah. After the failure of my camisole number six, I don't really want to work with cotton yarn. I just want to work with um, animal fibers, even if it's hot summer day in California. So I worked on this square neck camisole in 100% wool and I really like it. It's my most successful summer knit. Um, so the square neck camisole is a design by Helene. It has a really elegant square neckline. You also have um, optional decrease you can do on the side of the body. Um, and uh, the rib construction overall is really flattering on any body type. It's knit from top down, so you can adjust the length as you go. The yarn that I use is Sandy's Yarn Sunday. The color is Sea Breeze. It's a greenish blue. Uh, it's just a really unique blue color, different from the normal blue yarn that I've seen. So I really like this. I wear it a lot in summer. And again, I don't see any peeling on the fabric. It just looks like brand new. And I'm very happy with that. And this 100% wool is not very hot in summer. Um, I think it's probably because of the skin exposure it has. And plus, I don't really go outside in the day. So um, it's just really great to knit and wear in the summer. I would definitely knit more camisole using animal fiber. And even though it's a rib structure, I don't see very obvious stitch um, unevenness on the fabric. So I would definitely knit more camisole next summer using 100% merino. So next one is a very exciting finish object. This is my folklore cardigan. Um, I started knitting on this in April and thinking that I should be able to finish this cardigan when I'm in Chicago for my first Aeros Tour concert. But I wasn't able to finish it. It's my first time working on an all-over cable cardigan. And uh, you knit all the pieces separately from bottom up. So when I was in Chicago, I think I already finished the back and both of the front panels and started on one of the sleeves bottom up. Um, I was knitting so much on the plane and in the hotel, but you know, cables just take you much longer time than a simple stock net sweater. So I didn't finish it um, in the Chicago Aeros Tour concert, but I finished it in July and made it to the Santa Clara's concert and was able to wear this cardigan in the concert and enjoy the concert. And I forgot to say that the look of this folklore cardigan is from Taylor Swift's movie of Cardigan. And Folklore just happened to be my favorite album of Taylor Swift. And I always wanted to knit that cardigan in 100% wool. So finally I have this. I'll show you the back panel as well. It's my first time working on so many cables, small stitch, um, big cables, small cables, <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. I think I will knit more cable cardigan in the future or cable sweater. But you know me, I will probably knit more cardigans. 
The yarn that I used was from Baruch Kaulana's. It's 100% wool. Um, but when I was working on this piece, I feel like the yarn was a bit acrylic plastic feeling, almost like those 100% um, acrylic yarn that I use. Um, but after blocking, it's um, feeling more wooly and uh, actually very warm. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use this yarn in the future. Um, we'll see. But I don't really like the fit. I made a size extra small um, and it's really fitly on me. It's not the oversized look that I was looking forward to. Um, so maybe I should knit this in medium size and it will be more oversized on me. But I think in general it's a great pattern and my great experience to knitting all over cables um, and uh, the special meaning of wearing it to a concert also adds to it a lot so I'll definitely cherish this piece and my last cardigan oh my god I missed so many cardigans this year um, this cardigan is my season's cardigan I just finished it weeks ago and I showed it in my last uh, podcast episode it's a design by Ozella and it has a top-down raglan construction with half fisherman rib. Um, a highlight of the design is that you work the neck band together with the rest of the body. Um, I talk about the pros and cons of this construction in more details in my last episode. So if you're interested, you can check that out. The yarn that I used was Moon Spinner 2 ply from Custom Woolen Mules. It's my um, souvenir yarn that I got from Calgary. I really like the rustic feeling and um, the heathered brown color. Um, so I've been wearing this piece non-stop every day after I finish it. Um, so I didn't even have the time to fix the cuff uh, because this cuff is um, three centimeters short than my right sleeve. And I didn't have time to fix that yet. But um, I haven't depilled it, so it's a good time to show you the, the wear of this fabric. Um, so this fabric peel a lot more than I thought. I thought rustic wools would tend to peel less, um, but this seems like an exception. It's not that rustic, it's a, still a little bit soft, but you can see there's a lot of um, fluffy balls coming out. So that's something that I didn't expected um, but still I like this cardigan it's perfectly slightly oversized that I can throw on anytime and it's really squishy and chunky and warm or keep me warm in this um, autumn or winter even and uh, yeah I think I will still keep wearing it so we are done with all the sweaters or cardigans I knit this year and we can go to um, smaller objects and I will start with some socks. The first pair of socks that I knit this year is this Stella sock. It's a free pattern designed by Inca. It's a very lovely top-down lace pattern. I got the inspiration from Florence, from Handmade by Florence. She has a beautiful collection of lace socks and I just want to knit some of that for myself as well. So let me give you a close-up. The lace just looks really pretty and it's actually a lot easier than I thought to work on. The front of the sock are lace and the back are regular um, stockinette and they are separated by some pulling detail. Um, it just looks really flattering when wearing and displaying. <laughs> the yarn that I use, unfortunately I don't have the information anymore, it was from my old stash um, that I got three years ago but I think it has nylon content in it um, and I wear it a lot there's definitely some obvious peeling on it yeah I really like this and I definitely strongly recommend this pattern if you want to try out some lace socks and the next socks that I knit and I haven't <laughs> woven one of the ends um, this is the Midsummer Dancer sock designed by Sorry, Nolan. Again, it's a cup down sock with very pretty ruffle details on the top, and then um, there are some eyelets on the front of the sock. I think the lace pattern is charted, and it's really easy to read your knit to figure out if 
your eyelid is at the right position to form this little flower or something, I don't know. Um, and again, the sock yarn is from my old stash. Uh, but I think this white color, this white yarn does not have any nylon content in it. It's really soft, but I don't wear it that much because I'm afraid that I will wear a hole very quickly. Um, right now it has very obvious peeling on it again, um, but given the fact that I haven't worn it a lot, it's definitely less durable than sock yarn with nylon in it. But it's a great pattern, it's a very fun knit, so I definitely recommend it. And it's just really cute. And next we will go to accessories. The first accessory that I knit is a pair of fingerless mittens. It was my first time knitting fingerless mittens and the pattern that I use is called Onyx Mitts and I believe this is a free pattern. So you knit from bottom up and pick up stitches for the thumb. The yarn that I used was Lena Gato Per Stitch. It's a 100% cashmere. Um, it's really soft and really luxurious. It's a gift knit and I'm not sure which women I should gift in my family, but I will let them try and to see who likes it and I will gift it. Oh, uh, actually, I think the first accessory that I knit is this headband. Um, you can see that I use the same exact yarn um, I use on this cardigan to knit this headband. And the headband only took me about an afternoon to knit up and a very small amount of the yarn. So I feel like it's a good idea to use some leftover yarn to work on some accessories and you can pair it with your hand knit garment. It's just really cute. This is a pattern from a Chinese yarn brand called Hui Gui Xian. And I think it's their free pattern, but there's only um, Chinese version of it. But I think you might be able to find similar lace headband pattern from Ravelry. Um, but for right now, unfortunately, it's only in Chinese. So the next accessory is also a gift knit. This is the main wood hat um, that I knit for my boyfriend. It's a design by Laura Ringback. It's a bottom-up hat with fair eye color work and very continuous decrease um, to form the crown of the hat. This is a great fit for my boyfriend and I really like the modification that I did, which is to knit the brim double folded. So it's more squishy and really warm um, around your head and ear. The yarn that I use is from Pentos. Um, it's their classic wool worsted. I really like this yarn, it's rustic and sturdy. Um, don't feel this fabric will be worn through very quickly. Yep. So that's my first color work hat. You're going to see more. The second one is the bevel hat that I knit for my sister. It's designed by Donna Smith and the pattern originally was using some Shetland wool and the design was a contribution to 2015's Shetland wool week. The pattern only have sizes for adult and uh, the designer have a blog of how to modify the stitch count to fit the head of a kit. So I knit this in the smaller size of a kit and I think it should fit my sister. Um, her animal zodiac sign is sheep, so I think it's a great fit for her. Um, we still need to add a pom-pom at the top, but um, I will bring the yarn required for it and bring it back to China and I will make the pom-pom together with my sister. The yarn that I used was a worsted weight yarn from Woolfolk. It's softer than the Pantone's yarn, so I think um, kids will like it more. So I show my mom this finished object. She really wants one bevel hat for her as well. Um, so this is still wet and blocking. I just finished it yesterday. It only took me two nights. <laughs> Color work is just very addictive. So now I have two blue bevel hats. So I pretty much used the same color of the yarns. Um, the only difference was that uh, I ran out of the dark blue yarn after knitting the double folded brim. So I, so I used the Queens and Co. Lark for this part of the blue. Um, this is the yarn that I use for my Levitate wrap. Um, and I think it looks really great. There's a slight gradient of the blue. Um, I hope they were both like it. 
but this head turns out to be quite large after blocking so I will try to put the hat in the dryer and see if we can intentionally felt it a little bit yeah but I hope my mom and my sister will like their hat and we are going to make pom-poms together so the last accessory that I knit this year is this this is the I love stripes bandana designed by Susan Muller it's my first time knitting a bandana and I talk about it a lot in my previous episodes um, there are issue with the length of the bandana and I'm really happy that it turns out better now so the yarn that I use is Quivic from Windy Valley Mask Ox um, the 15% of the special Quivic fiber gives it a very very soft feeling this is the softest thing in everything that I've knitted this year and maybe in three years yes it's softer than the 100% cashmere and you can see there is a halo of the fiber after blocking I really like this yarn, I really like working with it um, I will definitely get more of this yarn so that's everything that I knit this year from January to November 11 months I hope you enjoy this video I had great fun collecting everything that I knit this year um, it's just amazing to see how much progress I've made and realizing that I spent so much time and energy on knitting and realizing again that I really really love this hobby I want to do it the rest of my life it's definitely a very productive and fruitful year for me in terms of knitting and everything else I'm really glad that I opened up an Instagram account to share about my knitting stuff um, earlier this year and also started this YouTube channel doing regular podcast episodes in English and now also in Mandarin and most importantly, thank you so much for clicking into my video um, like or subscribe or even comment and interact with me on Instagram it's just the best experience ever on internet it's the best community I could ever dream of so really, thank you so so much um, and um, yeah, I hope you are enjoying whatever you are working on, crafting on please uh, leave a comment down below to let me know what you are working on right now and I wish you happy Thanksgiving, have a great break if you are celebrating it um, and I will see you in my next regular podcast episode I will still try to record when I'm in China so I will see you then in December